batter for the bill. So evening the count, Jenna quickly gets that count at one and one. Gorka, a right-handed hitter. A lot of times you see some slappers in the leadoff position. And high fastball for strike number two. So working pretty quickly against this leadoff batter. Brant, we've done a couple baseball games together. This is your first softball game? Yes, it is. You will notice a lot faster speed of this game. We were at the Tippy Valley basketball, excuse me, baseball game last week, and it lasted, what, two and a half hours? Two and a half hours, yeah. Yeah. With, with bees swarming us with the whole time. With bees swarming us. The weather I'll was never, a I'll never forget. The weather was a little bit warmer, but chilly night, and that'll be an error for the second baseman. That's number 29, Brianne Milam, and Gorko will be at first base. So looking to get to... Double play will help Culver as the center fielder, Metters, comes up to bat for LaVille. Squaring around to Bunt, trying to move that runner to second base. And she will do so on the pass ball. So Gorka on second base. Sounds like there's a little more chanting going on in softball. Yes, there is a lot more chanting going on in softball. You may not like that part of it, but it is a little bit faster. It may be even faster tonight since it's freezing outside. Everybody's going to want to get in and out of the dugout quickly. And ball two will get away from the catcher. So Gorka will make it to third base. Stealing her way to home. Yes, counts two and one, no outs. Gorka on third base with the error by Culver. And inside pitch, that's going to drop just fair. So that'll be a hit just on the grass. So RBI for Menders there. And she will stay at first base. Up to the number five, Senders. Senders is the catcher for LaVille. And high fastball inside. That'll be a ball. No, strike one, excuse me, is a called strike. Harder to see from this angle. We're up above the umpire. So we'll have to rely on the scoreboard and probably Brant tonight. I don't know how good my eyes are. <laughs> Ball in the outside corner. That's a good strike. Jenna Moise, a lefty. Don't see many lefty pitchers in high school, so there's a little different angle on the ball when you're a right-handed hitter. And good change up on the outside corner. Steal by Metters is safe. So now runner in scoring position as Senders has a one and two count. High and inside, that evens the count at two. And swing and a miss for strike three. That's a big out needed by Culver after they had a run score on an error. So this brings up number nine, the first baseman, Foster. Up to number nine, Foster. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how this game progresses as everybody starts to numb up from the cold. Yeah, absolutely. And the fact that uh, there might be a slight windstorm going on out there. As I look out the window, actually half of the programs that were on the entry fee table have blown onto the field. As you can see, everyone's <laughs> struggling to get those off. A little help from the first baseman there as we get the field all cleaned up. So there is one out, and Foster's up to bat. Her count is 0-1 as Moist starts out with a first pitch strike. 
Second pitch gets away from the batter. Metters will steal third base. And ground ball to the second baseman. She just gets it there in time. So that is out number two, but an RBI for Foster. So two to zero is the score right now in the top of the first inning. Up to bat for Lancers, number 33, Philly. Number 33, Philly comes up to bat. She's a third baseman for LaVille. First lefty of the night that we've seen, and she is the number five hitter. Nice inside pitch, strike number one, fouls it back to the catcher. And nice change up on the inside corner. That's strike number two. Moist doing a good job working ahead quickly. And good curveball on the outside. That's a strike three. Big inning by Jenna Moist. Two runs scored for LaVille. The score is two to zero. Heading to the bottom of the first inning, you're watching RTC TV4. We'll be back. Bottom of the first inning here, Culver Cavaliers are up to bat. Your leadoff batter, the shortstop, is Allison Pearl, and she is number 25. So ball one in the dirt, good eye by Pearl. Swing and a miss on the inside, evens the count at one. And good eye as the ball hits the plate. Counts two and one with no outs. Good is the pitcher for Lancers. So that's a swinging bunt. Pearl might be able to make that, and she does. Doesn't get much of that ball, but it lands in no man's land. So her first swing 
is a hit for Culver. Up to bat for the Cavaliers, number two, Trista Fritter. So now I've never, I've never heard the term swinging bunt. Yes, it's uh, more of a, when you're in the softball world, you kind of develop that lingo. So obviously a bunt is just stick the bat out there and you bunt. Well, the point of a swinging bunt is that it's usually accidental and you swing so hard that you miss the ball and it ends up where a bunt would be with the action of swinging. So it's usually not intentional, but if it gets you on base, I'm all for it. So up to bat now is Fritter. She is the catcher and just a freshman for Culver. And hit to the second baseman could be a double play. They decide not to turn it. So good job by Fritter as she moves a runner into scoring position, sacrificing herself on the out. Up for the Cavaliers, number 17, Jenna Moyes. So the pitcher and number three hitter, the first lefty for Culver is Jenna Moyce. Power hitter for Culver, looking to get her teammate in from second base and cut that deficit in half. And pitch on the inside corner is low. Called for a strike. And Allison Pearl heads back to second base after they toss the ball down to third. And big hit on the chop to second base. That'll bounce off the ankle of the second baseman. Allison Pearl will score. So that's an error that scored an RBI by Jenna Moyce. Number seven that's feet that's for Lancers took that ball off the shin. Not very good on a cold night like tonight. So now hitting for Culver is Lindsay Prosky. She's the third baseman. And line drive out the middle. That'll be caught. Ooh. Jenna Moyce might be doubled up. Gets lucky as the ball hits her in the back of the legs. That was right into the glove. Yes, looked like a good hit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And could have been a chance for a double play. Up to bat now is Morrison, the left fielder. So Morrison takes ball one, but swings at the second pitch. There's your next swinging bunt. The catcher gets out on that one a little bit quicker, and that will end the inning as Culver just gets one run back. So LaVille still leads by one run, heading to the top of the second inning. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. To the top of the second inning, this is Fights up to bat for LaVille. She's the second baseman. Jenna Moy still on the mound. Score is 2-1. to one. 
LaVille is still ahead by one run. They had a pretty good first inning. Two errors in the first inning by each team caused them some runs to be scored. So the count is even at one now as fights fights off a foul ball. Did you see, see what I did there, Brian? Yeah, I did. That's very clever. <laughs> Thank you. So it counts one and one with nobody out and no runners on base. First game we have broadcasted from Culver High School softball game here. And thankfully, they have a pretty nice press box. Otherwise, we would be freezing outside. And you'd, you'd hear nothing but wind, I think. Yes, you're correct. So lucky you, you get to listen to me instead of the wind. Count is even at two as Fights hits another foul ball. Prosky holds on to it. So Oof. see what Moist does here. I'm hoping she throws a curveball. Ball in the dirt makes it full count. Want to know a fun fact? Sure. I am Jenna's pitching coach. Oh, so you're a little biased then. I'm, a ta I'm not actually biased. I'm more like Jenna. You got to get your stuff together. So I'm probably going to be more mean than I am going to be nice. So I'm, That's I'm, the kind of coach you are? I mean, I mean biased. This is a bad publicity for your coaching <laughs> career right now. <laughs> Swing and a miss. That's a drop third strike. They get it to first base, but it's dropped. So that will leave fights on first base. Up to the answer is number 25, Anis. Up to bat now for LaVille is Annis. She is the right fielder. Another lefty up to the plate. She turns to bunt and will pull it back as the ball's high, but fights will steal second base successfully. So runner is now in scoring position. Annis looking to get an RBI here. Extend their lead. And swing on a hit to the shallow center field. She comes up not throwing, but runs the ball into the infield. Up to back the number four, Weiss. So I, really thinking about that run home. Yes, she was trying. They ran the ball in pretty quickly, not allowing her to run to home. So runners on the corners as we have fights and Annis. This brings up Wise to the plate. She's the left fielder. Nobody out still. Culver in need of an out. And fly ball goes up and back behind us here in the press box. And turns to bunt. Could have been a squeeze bunt. Looks at third. Keeps her there. Not a bad situation for Culver as now the bases are loaded, so there's a play anywhere. No outs. So a hit up the middle could be turned into a double play. Anywhere to the corners in the pitcher could be thrown home. Big out here if Moise can, if Moise can get a strikeout or a pop fly to the infield. Brant, do you know the infield fly rule? I don't even know what you're referring to, so. <laughs> the bases are loaded, or there's more than two people on base, I think. I guess I should look up the rules, too. If there's a pop fly in the infield, the batter's automatically out because you could really screw some people up and get a double play if you dropped it on purpose. Mm -hmm. Then you could tag second base and tag first base, and then they're trying to prevent that rule from happening. So, a pop fly would be good for the Cavaliers. Also, a strikeout. There's a pinch hitter up to bat. Number 28, Allison Thomas. She's a freshman. She comes in for the Lancers. Really illustrates... Uh how crazy the wind out is out there because we used to have a shot of third on our big camera here. So but it's now off. 
You show it blew our camera sideways it is did. what you're saying? It did. Swing and a miss. That's a pass ball. They will get one run in. And runners on second and third now. First base is open. So the wind is blowing this camera? Yeah. That's upsetting. Mm -hmm. Someone needs to go fix that. It's probably me. It's definitely one of us. It is definitely <laughs> one of us. Because there's only two of us. Ground ball to Jenna, and she gets the first out. But a run does score, so runner at third base. That's number four, Weiss. And leadoff batter is up to bat again. This is Gorka, the shortstop. And quick bunt, not in fair territory, so Gorka will have to come back. Not able to get that RBI. Well, and now it was the softball that has knocked our camera yep. way off. So after this inning, I'll go fix that. All that fine finesse that we used. I know, I tried so hard. And foul ball up into the fence. Won't be able to be caught, but the count is one and two. Just one out here. Runner on third base. And high fastball, swing and a miss, strike three. Gorka will head to the dugout, bringing up number two, Medors. I'm just back to answers, number two, Medors. Foul ball back into the fence. Good Maybe first pitch strike by Moise. We might get lucky and they'll just knock it back down. You think so? I don't yeah. know if that'll work that Another. way. I, I would like to think so. I'm optimistic. You are? And ground ball to the third baseman. That'll be a nice pick by the first baseman, Jalen Fox. That will end the inning. Score is 4-1. to one. LaVille raked in a couple more runs that inning. Culver looking to answer back. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this.
in my way. Up to bat for the Cavaliers, number three, Alex Terry. And we're back for the bottom of the second inning here. Count is one and one. Second baseman Milam's up to bat for Culver. And count is now one and two on that. Just kidding, Timmy's up to bat. Milam's on first base. She had a hit past the shortstop. So Timmy's the right fielder. And Milam gets back to first base as the catcher throws down. Full count. Timmy looking for a walk or a base hit. Either one moves her teammate to second base and swing and a miss for out number one. Milam staying at first base. Up to bat for the Cavaliers, number seven, Abby Gregory. So high fastball goes past the catcher. Milam will head to second base. Abby Gregory up to bat right now. Ground ball to the shortstop. Doesn't look her back at second base. A pick at first base will be for out number two. But Milam advances to third base. So the center fielder, Linval, comes up to the plate. Still the first time through the lineup. And pitcher hits her mask, but starts over her windup. So that is ball number one. I'm surprised that wasn't a bulk. Swing and a miss for strike one, evens the count at one. Milam's still on third base, but two outs. So Linval looking to get her teammate in. 
And Milam's out at third base on the throw down by the catcher. That will end the inning. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. Up to bat for the Lancers, number nine, Foster. Welcome back to the top of the third inning here. Senders up to bat. Excuse me, Senders is on first base after the hit up the middle. Foster is now up to bat for LaVille. Score is still four to one. Culver not able to score a run last inning. Foul ball back again for strike number two. Moist way ahead on this batter. Foster the first baseman for LaVille. And swing and a miss on the inside pitch. That's a drop third strike, but there was a runner on first base. So Senders makes it to second base. Foster not able to go to first. This brings up number 33, Philly, to the plate. Bunt goes foul down the first baseline for strike number one. Another bunt gets pulled back for a ball. Senders now on third base. Right 
inside pitch. Hoist does a good job covering the plate, so runner does not score. Sender stays at third base. Philly has a count of two and one with one out. High and outside pitch gets bunted back foul. Trying everything they can to get that run in. Mm-hmm. High and outside, good grab by the catcher. Saves a run since Sender's on third base. High and outside for a ball four. Sends Philly to first base. Fights is up to bat now. Up to bat ball answer is number seven, Fights. Sender's on third base, Philly on first. Culver with just one out. Shot to left field will be cut off by the left fielder. Keeps the runners on first and second base. Senders will come in to put another run on the board for Lavelle. Scores five to one. Lady Cavaliers with just one out. Up to the Lancers, number 25, Annis. Springs number 25, Annis to the plate for the Lancers. Squares to bunt, throws down to second base, but double steal. Puts two runners in scoring position here for Annis. And swing and a miss on the outside pitch. Good pitch by Moise. Pop fire strikeout. Would be an ideal play here for the Cavs to keep those runs off the board. Good curve on the outside corner, just misses the outside part of the plate. Inside pitch, hit to right field. That'll fall in for a hit. Scores one run. And catcher stops the ball. So the second run doesn't get across. But runner will, Annis, will make it to second base. This brings up Weiss to the plate. So one out. Score is six to one. Culver looking for the middle out here. Two runners in scoring position. And swing and a miss, but the ball gets past the catcher. Throw not in time, so the run will score. That puts seven on the board for LaVille. Annis moves to third base, the only runner on base. And Weiss is the batter. Bunt's popped up, big catch by the catcher as that gets a relieving second out for the Lady Cavaliers. Up to bat for the Lancers, number 18, good. Number 18 and the pitcher, good, comes up to bat. This next out saves a run for the Cavaliers if they can get it done here. 
And nice pitch, ground ball to the third baseman. That's out number three and will end the inning for Lady Cavaliers. They will head to the dugout to grab their bats and hopefully put some runs on the board. Score is 7-1. to one. LaVille's in the lead. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. For the Cavaliers, Tracy Lindvall, she's a center fielder, had an at-bat last inning, but ended the inning on a throw out to third base. So she's going to start a new at-bat here. This is the bottom of the third inning. Strike one evens the count at one as she watched the first ball. So looking for a leadoff way to get on base, a walk, a hit, hit by a pitch. Cavaliers need some runners here to get the score back. That wind just blowing everything it can get. Just a little bit windy around here, you're right. Swing and a miss for strike two. And what's surprising is it's not like this field is out in the middle of a prairie. I mean, the school is right behind us where the wind's coming from. So I can't imagine. I've been on some fields where you don't see any structure for miles. Yeah. Be very, very windy out there this afternoon. Most of the schools, I think. Caston. Mm-hmm. Caston. Tippecanoe we, Valley. We were at Caston last open. week, and that was windy for sure. Rochester softball is pretty nice. Their field is almost right in the middle of um, a neighborhood. So, you know, you've mm -hmm. got a whole lot of houses around there. So ball four, good leadoff at bat, a long at bat by Linval, but she gets herself on first base. This brings up the leadoff batter, bat lead Allison Pearl. Allison Pearl. Lady Cavaliers doing a good job staying closer to the base. She definitely has a well-polished eye. Yes. Those. Absolutely. It takes a little while, but you'll get used to it. We'll have to have some RTC batting practice next week, and we can teach you some stuff. Oh, yeah. Count is one and one. Linval on first base. Nice hit in the five six hole. 
Shortstop not able to pick that up, and that's two runners on base for Lady Cavaliers with no outs. Looking like a pretty good rally getting started, especially at the top of the lineup. Fritter up to bat now. She's the freshman catcher for Culver. Good eye on the outside pitch. Culver doing a better job this inning of making the pitcher throw some strikes. Not swinging at some balls and that's allowing the Cavaliers to have a little better hand up in the lineup. So it counts even at one, two runners on base. Ball number two bounces across the plate. It's got to be hard to get those pitches in there when your hands start to freeze up. and. Yeah, usually when uh, your hand's numb, it's not that easy to uh, make that ball move. But all part of spring softball. Borderline winter softball. Yeah, and I played college softball in <laughs> February, so I, I have some sympathy. And good eye on ball three. That makes it a full count. Big pitch coming up right here. A walk loads up the bases for Jenna Moisey. And pop fly will fall in for a hit. That moves the runners all around the bases. And Linval heads home, heads up play by Coach Hammond sending Linval knowing she's got some wheels and Culver's on the board for the first time since the first inning okay. here. Cavaliers, number 17, Jenna Moyes. This brings up the number three batter and the pitcher, Jenna Moyes, looking to help herself out here with a big hit, with two runners on base. A little meeting, meeting at the mound. Meeting at the mound, meeting at third base, a little chit chat all the way around. Yeah. We should have a meeting. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. That we should have a meeting yeah. or that they're having a meeting? That we should have a meeting. Yeah. I mean, I figured we can't really talk softball strategy because you have no idea what it <sighs> means. So it's okay. I'm teaching you. We're learning. Look how much you've already learned. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Learn to fake it all the way. Fake it till you make it. That's <laughs> my motto. Maybe. So, Moise up to bat now. Allie Pearl on second base. And Fritter on first. Jenna watches the first pitch high. That's ball number one. No outs. And ball number two bounces on the ground, but heads toward the third baseman. Good decision by Pearl to stay back at second. Ooh, ball on the outside corner. Moise is going to want that one when she's pitching. And ground ball to the third baseman. That mm. gets the lead runner out for out number one. So two runners stay on base for Culver. That's Fritter and Moise. And up to bat now is Lindsey Prosky, the number four hitter. Not many hard hit balls so far this game. So Prosky looking 
to get a gapper and get a few runs on the board. A gapper, that's a professional term? Um, that is a slang term Okay. for a hit in the gap. The gap would be the place where the other fielders are not. It's a very clever coinage. You know, I try. I really do. Or I just make it up as I go. <laughs> So that will fall for a gapper. That counts, Brant. It will load up the bases. And good call by Coach Hammond keeping the runner at third base. Up to bat for the Cavaliers, number 20, Sarah Morrison. Sarah Morrison comes to the plate. Culver only has one out. Bases loaded. Lavelle finds themselves here in a little bit of a jam, especially if Morrison can find the center of the ball and drive it to the outfield. And nice pitch on the outside corner. Good pitch by Good. That's strike number one. Inside and low. Good eye on ball number one. Evens the count at one with one out. Another good pitch on the outside corner, a little bit of an off-speed pitch. Not the pitch I would want to hit, so good hold by Morrison. But now having to battle with two strikes. Base is still loaded with just one out. Big at bat here by Morrison to get some runs for Culver. And ball goes through the hole. Culver will score one as the ball is bobbled. Jenna Moist will come across the plate to score two. That's a big at bat for Culver as the score is now seven to three. Seven to four. Seven to four. So second base second baseman Milam comes up to bat. Runners on the corners for Culver. And Morrison easily walks to second base. Two runners in scoring position. And nice line drive, one of the best hits of the night. Milam will drive in two more runs. And now we've got a close ball game here, seven to six. Culver going on a pretty good rally here, bringing up Alex Temme to the plate. Now, now, was that a gapper? That was a gapper. Okay, I'm starting to catch on. Yes. Now. Mostly a gapper is a line drive. Mostly. Yeah. I mean, if you hit a ground ball. It's got to be a pretty good gapper. Yeah. To, I mean, to make just, it qualify as a gapper, yeah. it probably has Usually to. Usually it's like a shot through the gap. You're like, oh, that's you know it when you see it. So we're going to have a little pitching change here for the LaVille Lancers. This is number eight, Alex Wilfing. She's going to toss a few practice pitches, and I'm going to take a break of blabbering, so we will be back after this. that today? Yeah, yeah, so sorry, got here. Shut up! That's awesome! Can yeah. I take a picture of it? Uh, sure, but uh, is there, do you guys see anything wrong with it? I mean, I know the cape needs work and I can't draw the color, but is the overall pose good? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's like awesome. Yep. Yeah. Oh, they're getting ready. Welcome back. After the pitching change here where Wilfing is on the in the circle for Lancers. Alex Temme up to bat for Culver. And score is seven to six. Culver scoring five runs here. Milam on first base. She dives back after the throw to first. Temi looking to continue 
the rally with just one out here. Wilfing, the new pitcher, struggling to find the zone. Hard to come in mid-inning after quite a few hits. Looking to settle down here. And that's a good eye on a four ball walk by Timmy. She pushes Milam to second base. Up to bat now is Abby Gregory. She's the DP. Up to bat in Cavalier, number seven, Abby Gregory. Pitch on the inside corner is ball one. And nice pitch. Evens the count at one with one out. Two runners on base for Culver. Swing and a miss on an inside strike. Another nice pitch. Wilfing finding her zone here. Wind really picking up. Yeah, we can hear it a lot up here in the press box, but I can't imagine how it feels outside. People's blankets blown across the ground out there. Good battle off on an inside two strike pitch. Makes count even at two. And high pitch to make the count full. So walk here will load up the bases once again this inning for Culver. And pop fly on the infield. That will drop, but that's the infield fly rule. So batter is out. Runner is safe at third base. The and runner Number is safe eight. at second Number base. Seven. So Culver with two runners in scoring position. But now two outs as Linval comes up to bat. I think this is her second time up to bat this inning. Nice pitch for strike one. Wilfing doing a better job working ahead in the count, having a little more control in the circle. High fastball to even the count at one. And foul ball back at the fence. Camera stayed in place. High five. That was your fine work. And I tried. It only took me 14 times. I'm being locked out. <laughs> that, that too. <laughs> and nice hit. Nice hit to the third baseman. Okay, hold on just a minute, everyone. That call was all over the place here. Yes, so ground ball to the third baseman, but no force out at home. Third baseman threw it home. Runner was originally called out, but then the ball was dropped. So then she's been called safe, but we're waiting on the finalization. Is that a word? 
finalization? I don't think it is. It sort of feels like it is, but then it doesn't sound right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Completion? Completion is what I'm looking for. That's fin good. Finalization. That's good. Completion is what it was. I don't know. You are Thank you, making Peyton. new words up as we Peyton. go. So. Thanks, Peyton. Peyton in the press box up here. On the PA. Peyton on the PA system in the press Pre box. Press box Peyton. <laughs> yes. We just gave you a nickname, kid. <laughs> so now we've got runners on the corners after runner was safe at home. So crazy way to tie the game, but it's tied. So now Allison Pearl is up to bat, looking to tack on some more runs with two outs for the Lady Cavaliers. And foul ball back makes the count two and one. Squares to bunt. And umpire says it's strike three. But coach is arguing that it was only one strike. Little conversation going on. Yeah, scoreboard had it as one strike. Umpires had it at two strikes. So that will be the end of the inning. Culver's able to rally back to tie the score at seven. We are headed to the top of the fourth inning. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. High strike, swing and a miss for strike number two. Evens the count at two. Nobody on base and nobody out. Nice curveball by Moise. That's 
Hit to the third baseman and a good pick by Jalen Fox over at first base makes out number one for the Lady Cavaliers. Number two, Metters up to bat for LaVille. And here comes the chanting. Yes, there's always chanting. Baseball games are long, softball games are loud. And high fastball gets past the catcher, but no one's on base. Some pretty loyal fans out there. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of good moms and dads and relatives. With like five layers on. And I would four probably blankets. be the one in my car out in the outfield because it's a lot warmer out there. So counts three and one with one out. Moist looking for a strike here. And ball four, I think it's the first walk for LaVille this evening. Up to bat for the Lancers, number five, Senders. Number five, Senders comes to the plate. She's the catcher for LaVille. Ground ball up the middle can hit LaVille into a double play here. If Moist places the pitches correctly. And steal at second base is successful. I feel like oh. the wind got that one a little bit. Yeah, Looked I'm like sure the ball <laughs> is doing funny things out there. Tonight would be a tough night if you were a fly ball pitcher because the ball would be dancing all around. You can even tell just by the trees in the background are going all over the place. Ground ball to the second baseman. She stops it, but not able to make a throw for Fox to handle. That brings number two, Menders, all the way around. Puts one on the board. Um, do we have the answer? It's number nine, Foster. So, Senders is on second base, and number nine, Foster, up to bat now for LaVille. They've got one runner in scoring position. High and inside for ball number two. Somebody let the dogs out. I think they did. That was... Who? <laughs> so Moist looking for the strike zone more this inning than before. First walk and now 3-0 and count here. Good strike on the inside corner. I know Culver battling some injuries here with the pitching staff especially. And nice pitch fouled off backwards. Makes the count full just like that. So runner on second base. That's Senders and Foster's at the plate. Big out here if Culver can get this out. Keep runner on second base. And swing and a miss. Beautiful pitch by Jenna Moise and a good hang by the catcher. That's Fritter as she hangs on to that foul ball tip. 
So big out. Culver might get out of this with just one run of damage. Up to bat for Lancer is number 33. 33 Philly. Philly comes up to bat now. And Bunt gets pulled back. No steal on the play. Seems like there's been a lot of bunt attempts. Is that yes. common in softball? Yeah, especially if it's not a strike, you definitely don't want to try and bunt that ball. So nice inning by Culver. Kind of got themselves out of a jam. Jenna Moy struggling to find the zone early on, but does so later. That will end the top of the fourth inning. We're heading to the bottom. Scores 8-7. to seven. LaVille ahead by one run. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back. Welcome back to the bottom of the fourth inning. Lady Cavs at the plate, more specifically Fritter. She's the catcher. Alex Wilfing still on the mound after the substitution last inning for LaVille. Sounds like it just started to rain. Good thing we're inside. It's gonna make it a little bit tougher. Especially in the circle. And ground ball to the third baseman on the run throw gets passed. Right fielder not there backing up. She might make it to just second base. To bat for the Cavaliers, number 17, Jenna Morris. So that's a good leadoff double there by Fritter. And right behind her pitcher, Jenna Moise, up to bat. Culver's really holding on to that rally. Yeah, doing a really good job. Staying aggressive at the plate. And Moise ducks under a fastball at her helmet. Swing and a miss on an outside pitch. Counts even at one. Fritter on second base. Line drive will drive in a run for Moise. Good eye on a low pitch.
Another ball bounces across the dirt. Counts three and one. Moist with a good eye, especially as a pitcher herself. Little line drive bloop to the shortstop will fall in. All the back spin allowed it not to move once it hit the ground. So Fritters on third base, Moist on first base. This brings up third baseman, Lindsey Prosky. Little change in movement. We would have seen one of those fancy things you call a gapper. Yeah, they are fancy, and if you're on the right team, they're usually wanted frequently. Making fun of my lingo. <laughs> Bunt attempt, and Moist will head to second base. So now two runners in scoring position with the number four hitter up to bat. Clean up position. And inside pitch, that's a dead ball. Maybe not. I thought it hit her thigh. Did you think it hit her thigh? Uh, I wasn't watching. Paying attention. That's good. That's good to know. All right, so counts one and one. This is why I was in right field in Little League. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense now. It all mm -hmm. makes sense. And foul tip. Fritter thought about coming home, but ball was fouled off. High fly ball to center field. That falls in for a hit. Moist will head to third base and will be safe on the slide. Fritter heads across home. Super graceful slide by Jenna. Very impressed. Sarcasm. And uh, Broski will head to second base. So two more runners in scoring position as Culver ties the game up again. This is Morrison, left fielder, up to bat for Culver. To be fair, I don't know how responsive your legs would be in this. So. No, that's totally fair. I just have to tease Jenna about it. <laughs> Pitchers usually aren't the best at sliding, so. Looks like there's a little bit of windy, rainy hail going on out there. Yeah, this is great. Looks enjoyable. Classic American softball. <laughs> Springtime, got to love it. Outdoor sports, got to love them. Indiana weather. Got to love it. <laughs> So Morrison up to bat. Two runners in scoring position. Pop fly to the right fielder and Jenna Moist tags and is able to get across home plate. Prosky's safe at third base and that's a nice sack fly by Morrison. So this is bringing up Brianne Milam. So Culver now ahead by one run with the sack fly to right field. Nice pitch on the outside corner by Wilfing. Nice sharp ground ball. That will bounce off the shortstop's leg and she will be called out on the pick. So that is just two outs here for Culver. Um, and three, Alex, Temme. Alex Temme heads to the plate. So an RBI on the ground ball by Milam. 10 to 8 is the score here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Nice low and inside strike for Wilfing. Good placement on both those pitches, working the inside and the outside corner here. Oh, and two's the count with two outs. Temi needing to battle here during this at bat. And 
And change up floats in pretty high. Good eye by Timmy. Counts even at two with two outs, no runners on base. Culver up by two runs in the bottom of the fourth inning. And strike three on a low and inside pitch. That will end the inning for Culver as they will grab their gloves to head out for defense. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. Two back-to-back -back rallying innings. Now they're up by two runs. Scores 10 to 8. Curveball just misses the outside corner. High fly ball to left field. Goes over her head but she will get it in to keep the runner at second base. So big leadoff hit for LaVille. Up to half the Lancers, number 25, Annis. This brings up number 25, Annis, to the plate. Swing and a miss on a outside curveball. That's a nice pitch. Ground ball to first base. Jalen Fox easily gets out number one. But fights will be pushed over to third base. This brings up. Up to back ball answers, number four. Weiss. Number four, Weiss. She's the left fielder for Laville. And bunt attempt on a high pitch. She did go for it, so that's strike number one. Squares to bun again, and this time ball gets past the catcher, so fights will get into home. And score is now 10 to 9. Culver leading just by one now.
Hine inside for ball number two. One out, nobody on base. Culver's defense able to relax just a little bit. Looking for this second out. Nice pitch and a strike on the outside corner for Moise. Foul tip back as Weiss tries to fight with the 2-2 two two count. Nice change up, but that's a drop third strike. Weiss pretty speedy makes it to first base. Good change up by Jenna Moist there. So still one out. Pitcher number eight, Wilfing, comes up to bat. little meeting there third base coach little coach to batter chit chat Wilfing returns to the plate runner in scoring position as her teammates on second Culver looking for a big out here to stop the potential rally of the Lancers and good scoop by the catcher Fritter Line drive caught by Prosky. That's a big out and a thankful one. Moisey congratulates her on the catch of the line drive. Could have been dangerous heading to that left field corner. So that's two outs for Culver. Runner still on second base for LaVille. And Prosky's all over that bunt as she will throw her out. Great defense, back-to-back -back plays by Lindsay Prosky on the line drive catch and the bunt that was almost down the first baseline. So LaVille gets shut down with only one run able to come across. Score is 10-9. to We're heading to the bottom of the fifth inning where Culver will grab their bats and try to rally a few more times. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. Yeah, those clouds definitely look like they're holding back a little bit. Yeah, they're a little ominous here. That's a nice pitch down the center of the plate. Just missed by Gregory. Woo! 
Wilfing getting better each inning as she's come in as a substitute pitcher here. Count to one and two with no outs and no runners on for the Lady Cavs. Way outside, good snag by the catcher. That's Senders behind the plate for LaVille. Nice pitch on the inside corner. Good eye by Abby Gregory. Probably would have swung at that. Would have been bad. And even farther inside, that's a dead ball and a wonderful leadoff at bat. People don't understand how much it hurts to be hit by a pitch. And when you can stay in there and tough it out and get a leadoff runner, that's fantastic. So good at bat by Abby Gregory. Puts herself on first base. Up to bat now is teammate and center fielder Linval. High and outside. Abby Gregory gets back to first base on the throw down. Counts 1 and 0 with no outs. Squares to bunt, pulls back at the last second. Good choice on ball number two. High fastball for ball number three. Wolfing struggling to find the zone for this batter. Hyde inside takes ball four. Great job for the first two batters. Those are your number eight, nine hitters. Now bringing up leadoff batter Allison Pearl. She's got a chance to expand on this rally here. LaVille will take a short timeout, have a chit-chat in the circle, and we will be back right after this. Welcome back to the fifth inning where we took a short little break here and LaVille changed their pitchers. So Fights is now on the mound for LaVille. Two runners on base for Culver. Allison Pearl up to bat and she takes ball number two. We've got Gregory and Linval at second and first base here. Thank you. 
And swing and a miss on an outside off-speed pitch. 10 to 9 is the score at the bottom of the fifth inning. Fly ball goes back behind the Laville stands where the fans are probably freezing. It's a good thing we parked far away. It is a good thing. That's rule number one. Do not park near the field. If you have to walk, it's worth it. I broke a car window once with home run. It doesn't feel that good. Count is now full with two runners on base. Pearl looking to move the runners into scoring position here. And ball four will load up the bases. So last three innings, Culver doing a really nice job keeping their foot on the accelerator and really pressuring LaVille. Fritter up to bat now. High and inside for ball number one. Fights looking to find the zone here as she comes in as a substitute pitcher this inning. Nice pitch on a low and outside corner. Bases loader Fritter just needing to <clears throat> move the ball. Looking for a gapper here, Brant. A gapper would be good. And that's a ground ball to the pitcher. She'll throw it home, and the force out will get Gregory crossing home plate. So LaVille with a sigh of relief as they stop the run from scoring for Culver. Jenna Moist is going to want to help herself out here and get the ball out of the infield to get one or two runs across the board here. Base is still loaded. Bases are still loaded as Fritter heads to first. And inside pitch... Jenna would have taken that pitch. It would have been a run. Just saying. That's where my mind went, too. It was? Yeah. Bram. I'm learning. I'm impressed. Take that pitch, girl. And ground ball to shortstop. That'll be out number two. But Jenna gets an RBI as Linval crosses home plate. Up to the Cavaliers, number 16, Lindsey Prosky. So Prosky up to bat now. She had a good defensive inning just before we came back from the break. Would complete a little triage of good play here if she busted this game open with a line drive to the outfield. See if she has one more in her. One more. 11 to 9 is the score in the bottom of the fifth inning. Getting colder as I'm talking here. Ground ball to the shortstop, and she will not get the runner in time. Prosky crosses, and Allison Pearl crosses home plate. The scoop by the first baseman not picked up clean enough to be an out. So the left fielder Morrison comes up to bat for Culver. Score is now 12 to 9 here. Inside low on that pitch. So runners on the corner. Fritter on third, Prosky on first. And up to bat is Morrison. Swing and a miss on a nice inside pitch. Evens the count at one. Nice swing on the inside pitch. Knew that was going far. Gets past the center fielder. Prosky will end up on third base. And Morrison has a stand-up double. That's a nice RBI as Fritter crosses home. It's a good gapper. It was a good gapper, Brant. There you go. 
Yeah, good connection. Knew that was going to be a solid hit from the moment she swung at that pitch. So now Brienne Milam, the second baseman, comes up. She's got two runners in scoring position. She doesn't have to stop this rally. Can keep it going with another good hit. Dead ball takes Milam to first base. Bounces off some part of her foot. So substitute is going to come in as Coach Hantman goes up to talk to the umpire. Up, bat, up to bat next. Don't look at me like that. Would be Alex Timmy. They're going to make a quick change here. This is number 27, Mackenzie Buckman. Did you just break the wire tie? I did not. You better not have. <laughs> Those are my babies. Oh, wow. You did. So Buckman comes in, and she is going to pinch hit for Alex Timmy, the right fielder. 13 to 9 is your score here. Two outs with the bases loaded. Nice pitch on the outside corner, but a swing and a miss by Buckman. Low and inside. Good eye on ball number one. Foul ball comes back at the fence. So counts one and two with two strikes. Fights pleased with that foul ball as it gets her up in the count. Blowing sideways rain now makes it a little tough out there. Nice ground ball shot to the second baseman, but the first Ooh. baseman will be pulled off of first. So Buckman is safe. LaVille thought they were getting out of the inning. Uh, to the the Cavaliers. Number seven, Abby Gregory. So Abby Gregory comes up to bat. I think that all lined up with the nice burst of weather we got. Yeah, I that, think. That hit came right when the rain started coming down. Coach is arguing that maybe the second baseman had tagged the runner going to second base, but the umpires are saying that she was safe. Also explaining that the first baseman pulled her foot. So they're going to investigate this here, which is good timing since it's raining out. Props to Peyton, who just gave me a gummy bear, gummy worm. In the press box. Peyton on the PA in the press box. Do you approve of that nickname? He says yes. Emphasis on the approve. Approve. Portion. With this impeccable gummy worm I'm eating right now. So they will switch the runners at first base. Buckman was safe. They'll put Temmie back in to run for her. It's raining sideways as the sun comes out. That's Indiana for you. It is. <laughs> it's the oxymoron of what we like to call weather. Now up to bat is Abby Gregory. I think I already said that, but in case you forgot, I did. So bottom of the fifth inning, Gregory with a ground ball to first base. That will be an easy out for LaVille. Heading to the top of the sixth inning. We've got some applause, which I thought it meant the game was over, but it's not. They're just happy that the score is 14-9. Culver is in the lead. 
Going to defend that on the mound right now is Allie Pearl heading out there. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. Inning here, Jenna Moisey, dang it, Jenna Moise <laughs> still on the mound. It's easy to say it the other way. She's pitching for the Cavaliers, and that's a pop fly. They aren't able to get it. All the backspin didn't need allow it to go foul and wasn't able to be caught either. So that's a first pitch hit for the inning. Out to the answer is number five, Senders. That was number two, Medors. And now number five, Senders, is up to bat for LaVille. Nice pitch on the outside corner. Medors steals second base successfully. High fly ball. That will be a home run over left field. Two run home run. Doesn't do a ton of damage to Culver as they are still ahead. But that does clear the bases for LaVille with nobody out. So a little more momentum for LaVille. Score is now 14 to 11. It's a tall fence, too. It is. It's a 10 foot fence. I think 210 is the distance out there. Normal high school softball fence would be around 200 to 210 and about, oh, six feet to 10 feet, unless you're Winnemac, then you have a really teeny tiny fence. So Jenna Moist gaining some composure here as she pitches to number nine, Foster, who's now up to bat. Culver's still up by three runs, needing three outs here to get back in the dugout. And that bunt will go foul. Almost caught. Almost. It was a close one. And ball low evens the count at one. High and inside for ball number two. Good eye by Foster. Nice pitch on the outside corner. Evens the count at two. Yeah. 
High fly ball to right field. And she will be camped under it. So that's out number one, a big first out for Culver this inning. This brings number 33, Philly, up to bat. And the butt rolls foul. But called fair, and Jalen Fox gets pulled off of first base, so runner is safe at one. Number seven fights coming to the plate now for LaVille. Line drive to left field, gets stopped. And the tag at third base will come just a little too late as Philly is safe at third, Fights is safe at second. So LaVille going on a little rally of their own here. Score is still 14 to 11. One out, Culver in need of out number two pretty quickly. Number 25, Annis, coming up to bat. High and outside for a ball one. So you got some clear skies rolling in. Clear skies in the distance. Peyton says you jinxed it, because currently it's raining. High and outside again. Moist looking for the strike zone here. Just in need of a few outs to sew this game up, especially if Culver stays ahead. They won't have to defend the bottom of the seventh inning. Three and zero count with runners on second and third. A walk here will load up the bases. Just one out here for Lady Cavs on defense. Nice pitch on the inside corner, high and inside. Anna's not a fan. Watches that one go by. High and outside, that ball gets fouled off. Much too much relief of Jenna Moise. Looks like we got a few raindrops on our camera lens there. It's exciting, it's good for the yeah. electronics. Yeah, absolutely. And lets that one go in ball four. Oh no, that will be a run scored by LaVille as the catcher throws it past Moise on the throwback. So score is 14 to 12 now. Runners on the corners and number four, Y is up to bat. Only one out so far. Just one out, yes. In desperate need of out number two here. Nice pitch, Jenna looking a little bit angry there, needing to get that nice strike. So counts 0 oh and 1. Nasty, nasty weather out today. Just a few more innings here. So, lights on the car out there have to be shut off. Why is that, oh, 
distraction to the batter. Now that that's all taken care of. There's two of them out there. Two cars? Yep, they just got them. Or two lights. Two, well, four <laughs> lights, two cars. <laughs> Don't test my math. Sorry. <laughs> Don't test mine, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, and one is the count with one out. Bases not loaded, but runners on second and third. Culver looking to get a second out here and stop the momentum that LaVille found this inning. Nice pitch, and that's a strike three. Good job by Jenna Moist, bearing down, knowing that they need that second out. She's not going to let their momentum keep going and getting that batter on strike number three. So bringing up Lancers, number, eight. number eight, Wilfing. Alex Wilfing. Strike number one. On the outside corner. Nice pitch for strike number two. That's a fair ball. Oh, past the first baseman. That will tie the game up for Culver. And LaVille will bring two runs across the board. Quite a game-changing inning Tough here. Tough play on that one as the pick goes by the first baseman. So game is now tied for the third time, question mark? Third time, question mark, for sure. Mm-hmm. Peyton says exclamation mark, as in we are correct, so. We'll go with that. Culver looking for the third out here. And this is number 24, Gorka, up to bat. Fly ball over the second baseman's head. Gets past the right fielder as she bobbles it. That will be thrown home too late. Runner makes it across home and to second. Now going to third. And someone is able to cover home. So Gorka is stopped at third for a stand-up triple. Culver needing to... Pull it together here as they are now down by one run. Came into this inning leading by five. Got a little too relaxed, I think, this inning. Call or Laville found some momentum with that home run, and then <clears throat> there's been a couple errors that have been crucial. So this brings up number two, Metters, to the plate. We got another car with its lights on. <laughs> I didn't know this was such an issue. People work with us. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's that time of night where your automatic lights are coming on. Oh, yeah, so that's true. when they pull up, they just want to keep their car running and keep the heat on. So they've got to turn those lights off. Those are the bright ones. Those are the. Those are the bright the, ones. The LED ones mm -hmm. that almost throw you off the road if you're not careful. Yeah. Good invention. Whoever came up with that. <laughs> Solid. I feel like you have to have LED lights to deal with cars that have LED mm -hmm. lights. There's no combating it otherwise. So that pitch evens the count at one. Runner on third base as Gorka just got a triple. Looking for the third out so Culver can get back into the dugout. Ball goes past the catcher, and she'll be thrown out at home. Gorka gets stuck on the head dive, so Moyes is able to tag her out. That's a good play at home. 
three outs ends the inning. We will head to the bottom of the sixth inning where Culver looks to get some runs back. You're watching RTC TV4, Abby Malco and Brant Gerald. We'll be back after this. The bottom of the sixth inning where we had a little bit of a lead change the past inning and LaVille is now up by one run. Score is 15 to 14. This is Tracy Linval, the center fielder, up to bat for Culver. Takes a first strike on the inside corner. High and outside for ball number one. Makes the count even. Nobody on and nobody out. Linval, the leadoff batter of the inning. Hard shot down the third baseline. That's just foul. Counts one and two now as Linval needs to battle here as the leadoff batter. Swing and a miss. Good swing, but that's strike number three. So LaVille gains their momentum as they get the first batter out. This brings up the leadoff, number 25, Allison Pearl. Well, it appears that good weather is not attracted to compliments. It's not. It actually has gone farther the more we've talked about it. So it's exciting. <laughs> it's the jinx. It is the jinx. We're so jinxy. We need to stop doing that. It's not my fault. If I could reverse jinx, I totally would. Ball low and inside. Makes it count 2-0. and oh. One out with nobody on base. Culver looking to get a few runs here, get their lead back. We've had quite a few lead changes this game. Nice ground ball by Allie Pearl. I th that will be out number two. Hard hit just right at the second baseman. Up to bat for the Cavaliers, number two, Trista Fritter. So Trista Fritter comes up to bat now for Culver. I'm sorry, Trista, please strike out. And tough swing on strike number one. That's an inside pitch. Couldn't quite make the decision there. Nice pitch on strike number two. And Fight's doing a very good job this inning. Struggled a little bit when she came in last inning, but finding her groove here. And nice smash line drive right behind the third baseline. 
It's third baseman on the third baseline. Up to back to the Cavaliers, number 17. Jenna Springs Moyes. up number 17, the pitcher, Jenna Moyes. She could return the favor and hit a two run shot over the fence. Culver would be sitting pretty good right now. Ground ball to the pitcher. She runs it over to first base and that will be out number three. So Culver heads to grab their gloves for the top of the seventh inning. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. the seventh inning as Abby scarfs down a gummy worm it's my second gummy worm by the way oh your second <laughs> number two <laughs> the center fielder Metters up to bat for LaVille still hanging on by a one run lead are the Lancers first pitch is fouled back at the fence are you enjoying the softball chance I am I'm actually taking notes so I can participate next game. I think that you should <laughs> on air. Pop fly to the infield. Jenna's going to run for it. Good Ooh, catch. Wow. Wanted that out. Needed that out. Got that out. I'm impressed. Oh, my God. I just thought something terrible. What if next game we only score one point? So one out here. Culver looking to have a quick inning to get back in and score more than one run. Right, Peyton? That's a nice strike on the outside corner. Ball gets past Moyes, but no one is on base. No damage done there. And now it's sunnier than it has been all night and raining a little bit harder as well. Just to give you folks at home a weather update. Ball a little slick. Ends up on the outside corner. This is Number five, Senders up to bat. Moy's pitching a little more careful to her as I think she's the one who hit the home run last inning. Nice inside pitch. Makes the count full. Good three and one pitch by Moyes. I think we've definitely seen like every aspect of weather. Hey within the last Don't say hours. that because then a tornado is going to come because we haven't seen that yet. Peyton's predicting a fire tornado. So I that's hope he's wrong, Peyton. I hope you're not a good weatherman. <laughs> that is optimistic <laughs> about a fire tornado is that it would bring heat. It would bring heat. A little apocalyptic, but also warm. Yes. 
<laughs> Jeez. So that was ball four. The walk for Senders brings up Foster to the plate. One out for the Cavaliers. And that's a dead ball Ooh. inside. That one looked like it hurt. That, you know, Not they, that all, they, don't they like all usually <laughs> hurt. They all usually don't feel that great. Oh, we got a little rainbow here. We have a right, rainbow? Right on our camera. Look, coming out. Nice. Yeah. Okay, this is a good sign. An RTC exclusive of the rainbow we provided Culver, this, Indiana. We provided this rainbow. That is not CGI, folks. That's it is real, real rainbow. Promising not to be rainy and gross anymore this softball season. Right? I didn't know they made promises. I hope that they do. So number 33, Philly up to bat. Nice strike on the inside corner. Evens the count at one with one out. Two runners on second and first base here. High and outside, fouls it back towards us. Counts one and two here. Big out for the Cavaliers if they can get it this at bat. Good stop by the catcher. Almost resulted in a second out. Big pitch here as the count's even at two with two runners on. Ground ball back to Jenna. She could get a double play. Isn't even, doesn't get the runner at third base. I think she was a little confused there for a second. So that's no outs. Tried to get the lead runner, which was smart, but didn't happen quick enough. So now bases are loaded. And this is number seven, Fights, the pitcher up to bat. Strike on the outside corner. Ground ball back to the pitcher. Instead of going home, she goes to first base, and that will be out number two. So the score is 16 to 14 as Lavelle gets a oh, second run across. Up to bat now is number 25, Annis. Runners on second and third with two outs, 16 to 14 in the top of the seventh inning. Ground ball up the middle, stopped by the second baseman. Does she not able to make the throw to first base and the throw home does not make it as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a double for Annis and two more runs come across the board for LaVille. Mm -hmm. Score is now 17 to 14. No, 18 to 14. Culver just looks a little demoralized after the yeah. big inning from LaVille. Yep, needing I to. I think they, they really thought they had, had this one in the bag. and Needing to bounce back a little bit here. They still have one more chance in the bottom of the seventh inning. No, they don't. We have no chance whatsoever. We're going to lose so I can go Nice big pot of warm soup when I get home. Sounds really good. Agreed. Um, the bad ball answer is number 17. Sorry, Jack. Do you guys think this is bad? Imagine doing a double header on a day just as windy as this. So after a few substitutions, the scoreboard wasn't working. So 
I couldn't tell what inning it was. So it was never ending. Ooh, never. that came right at the camera. It did. It jostled it just, just a touch. Looks like we still kind of hold our shot. So when are you guys going to film the VR so you can experience <clears throat> the whole thing? Number 17, Nina Sadak up to bat for LaVille. Yeah, we're needing to fix that camera. Swing and a miss for strike number two. Annis makes it to third base on the pass ball. Annis going back to second base. That was a foul tip. Foul ball on the 0-2 pitch. Two outs. Culver in need of this out here to get back in the dugout. Rally up some runs and make a comeback. The bottom of the seventh inning. Change up high. Gets past the catcher. Annis now makes it to third base. Legally. Legally, huh? Yeah, before she went. and okay. It was against the rules. Pop fly to the third baseman. That'll be out number three. Culver heads in to grab their bats for what could be the last time. Score is 18 to 14. LaVille is in the lead. You're watching RTC TV 4. We'll be back after this. The seventh inning, where athletic director Mr. Barrett just informed me that we have successfully made it to one of the longest softball games in Culver softball history, so congrats to us. Brant and I seem to have a knack for that sort of thing. We Yeah, if, if you ever want to see a sporting event go way beyond the time frame <laughs> that it should, you, you just sh should check out the schedule of RTC filming. <laughs> and you should invite us, because... Recently, when Brant and I are around, there's been triple overtimes, two-and-a-half-hour baseball games, which is where we are at with softball since it is now 7.30 p.m. And making it just a little bit longer, Prosky up to bat. And her line drive was the first out of the inning. Brings up Morrison to the plate, so Culver just now – Two outs away from the end of the game. They're losing by four runs. 18 to 14 is a score. A very, very high scoring game if you're a softball fan. Line drive up the middle. Beautiful hit by Sarah Morrison. That'll put her on first base. And uh, Brianne, <laughs> Brianne Milam up to bat. That was, that was bad. I, came, I, I lost my voice in the morning. I had to do a double, it was a double header. Everything went wrong with that double header. I lost my voice that day, so it was like, I'm not joking. <laughs> oh, 
Pop fly to the left fielder. She's camped yes. under it, and she does catch the ball. So that's two outs for Culver as Milam flies out. Morrison stays at first base, and Alex Temme comes up to the plate. Counts 2 and 0 oh and 2 outs. Morrison still on first base. You know, it's ironic because you warned me that softball games go a lot I faster know. than baseball. I should just not say anything. I should not say anything that comes to my head because I literally do that to myself <laughs> say every anything time. that comes to your head. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> just, I just, just be speechless should forever. not talk because I jinx the heck out of everything. So Timmy walks, and that puts Morrison on first base. Now Abby Gregory comes up to bat. Yeah, I'm just impressed that these players have the, the fight in them to carry on such a long game with this weather. Cause yes, it couldn't after, be a after worse. After a couple innings, I think I would have <laughs> given up and be like, let's go home. <laughs> Time to go. Couldn't be a worse game to have this type of weather. You're correct. Why is the ball? I've seen strikes that are balls, and balls have strikes in the rough call. Inside pitch, hits Ooh, Gregory on the leg. That's going to leave a slight mark, but she will jog down to first base, and before you know it, bases are loaded. And this is Linval coming up to plate. <laughs> so two outs, 18 to 14. LaVille is ahead by four runs. But a grand slam by Linval could tie it up very quickly. And line drive to the shortstop brings in one run. Left fielder bobbles it. It's going to bring in a second run. So now Culver is just down by two runs. And this brings Allison Pearl up to bat. Up to bat the Cavaliers, number 25, Allison Pearl. So 18 to 16, Allison Pearl with a Home run can win the game. The winning run is at the plate right now. No, no, no. Tying run is on first base. No, no. So two outs here. And we will see how this goes. Strike number one on the outside yes. corner. And low and inside for ball number one. Evens the count at one. Base is still not loaded. Runners, runners are on second and first. High and outside for ball number two. Base hit scores a run. Culver now down by two, 18 to 16 in the bottom of the seventh inning here. And inside pitch for strike number two. Makes the count even at two. Allison Pearl looking to protect here. Get the ball in play. Stay alive for one more batter. And ground ball, foul ball to the first baseman.
swing and a foul ball that hits the fence. Allison Pearl having a good long battling at bat here. Good eye for ball number three, makes the count full. A walk here will load up the bases. Full count, two outs, bottom of the seven inning, seventh inning, 18 to 16. Culver down by two runs. Ground ball to the first baseman, yes. and that will do it for the game. LaVille wins the game by two runs. A hefty score here in a two and a half hour game. 18 to 16. LaVille Lancers are victorious over the Culver Lady Cavaliers. You've been listening and watching RTC TV 4. We will see you next time. Well, it was nice meeting you.